the European Union's Committee of the Regions held a comprehensive debate Wednesday on trans-European transport networks, which are designed to provide fast, efficient and sustainable links between the EU's regions and cities. The debate provided the first public discussion of the European Commission's new white paper, which proposed a radical overhaul of the EU's transport system up to 2050 by phasing out the use of petrol or diesel fueled cars in cities, shifting intercity transport from road to rail or water, and developing low carbon fuels for aircraft and shipping. Delegates at the forum broadly welcomed the Commission's vision but stress the importance of involving regional authorities as full partners in developing Europe's transport systems. Mercedes Bresso, the president of the Committee of the Regions, underscored the need to find the right balance between the goals of competitiveness, cohesion and sustainability. This is a document which will make Europe's regions and cities move, and not just in the figurative sense. Over the next few months, there's going to be a lot of political debate on this important sector. Michel Delabarre, mayor of Dunkirk, questioned whether the Commission's deadline and financial estimates were feasible. I'm extremely skeptical. I'm just as skeptical as I am enthusiastic when I try to imagine how all of this is going to be financed. Given the tough economic environment, with public financing increasingly squeezed, speakers insisted that more work was needed to direct funding to transport projects that brought real benefits at a European level. Luis Ramon Valcacel Ciso is first vice president of the Committee of the Regions. In una coyuntura tan difícil como la actual, it's a difficult economic situation that we're in today. The European Union and its member states are suffering real difficulties. The regions in particular are suffering financial difficulties. So we've got to try to rationalize the amount of money we invest in infrastructure. However, we shouldn't use that as a pretext to reduce the ambitious plans that we have to develop a transport network which would contribute to maintaining competitiveness in the regions at a very advanced level. At the same time, we should be able to expand this to the more peripheral regions of the European Union in geographical and economic terms. Brian Simpson is chairman of the European Parliament's Committee for Transport and Tourism. Resources are limited, so we need to target our funding in the most efficient way. We need to concentrate the funding decisions on those projects which are in line with our sustainability goals, in line with our priorities, and on those projects with added European value. Over the last 15 years, around 400 billion euro have been invested in the trans-European transport networks. Almost a third coming from EU sources such as the Cohesion Fund to provide better interconnection between national transport networks. Rudolf Niesler, Director of Policy Coordination at the Commission's Regional Policy Directorate said the focus would remain on using the transport networks to provide cohesion among Europe's regions. The core of the investment within our policy takes place in the poorer countries and regions where the funds are effectively available. That is currently the place, for example, uh, where we spend uh, on trans-European networks an amount about of 35 billion euros. Speakers acknowledged the transport policy also has to be used to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and build efficient links with the EU's more peripheral areas, particularly those in the eastern member states. Jean-Éric Paquet is Director of Trans-European Transport Network Policy at the European Commission. The core network, the European Mobility Network, is really there to ensure that we can grow together the eastern and the western part of our European transport system.